Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretative spectroscopy. And now let us continue uh, again discussing more interesting examples of phosphorus compounds and then see how uh, easy it is uh, to interpret the data obtained from 31 PNMR spectra of various very interesting phosphorus compounds. So in my previous lecture, I showed these three molecules here and then I could show you how to interpret or how to sketch an NMR spectrum of both 195 platinum as well as 31P phosphorus in case of platinum compound. So let me now discuss the splitting pattern and also sketch an NMR spectrum corresponding to rhodium complex here. First let me look into 31P NMR spectrum of this rhodium complex. As I said earlier, rhodium 103 isotope is 100 percent abundant with I equals half. So, it couples equally and then we have phosphorus is there and the moment you look into the molecule you should be able to tell that there are two different type of phosphorus atoms are there. One is directly attached to rhodium with uh, two fluorine atoms on it and one oxygen whereas the second phosphorus is doubly bound to sulfur and then uh, it is not directly connected to rhodium. So, we have uh, two phosphorus uh, atoms and are there and also fluorine can also couple with both the phosphorus atoms and rhodium can also couple with both the phosphorus atoms. And rhodium phosphorus coupling constant is in the order of uh, 180, 180 to it can go up to 300 or 350 hertz. Now, let us me uh, go to the spectrum of rhodium complex here. In rhodium, I have labeled as Pa and Pb here and of course, I can also label them as A and X. This is a typical AMX spin system, AMX spin system, but we are looking into A and X signal because rhodium is a heteronucleus here. So now, first uh, if you look into Pa, it is first coupled with rhodium because rhodium to phosphorus coupling is larger than phosphorus to fluorine. So, it first couples with rhodium to give a doublet here and this is 1J rhodium phosphorus coupling. Now, it is coupled with fluorine since two fluorine atoms are there and each of the doublet lines are split further into triplet something like this and this is 1J PF coupling and next we have is two bond apart P. P5, Pb, so that P also couples with Pa to give a doublet. So, each one is split this one here it is 2J Pp coupling. So, now the spectrum should look like a doublet of triplets of doublets, a doublet of triplets of doublets. So, this is how we have to pronounce. So, initially start from doublet of triplets of doublets. So, this is how we can pronounce the multiplet related to PA signal. And now let us look into PB. When we look into PB, first it will couple with uh, phosphorus because that 2J phosphorus to phosphorus coupling is little larger. It couples with uh, 2J PP. And then each line will be split by rhodium that is two bond apart. So, this is rhodium coupling. This also 2J rhodium phosphorus coupling. Now, we have 1, 2, 3. So, 3 bond apart 2 fluorine atoms are there. So, they are also likely to show some coupling, long range coupling of 3 bond coupling. So, each line uh, here will be split into triplet here due to the presence of 2 equivalent fluorine atoms. So, this spacing what is there? This is 3J PF coupling. So, that means basically what we have is a doublet of doublets of triplets doublet of doublets of triplets and this is how the spectrum would look like. So, this is about 31 PNMR spectrum and probably you, you can try, try to sketch 19F NMR spectrum for this molecule and also you should try to write 
103 rhodium. Try very simple, try to sketch 19 f NMR spectrum for this molecule and also try to sketch 103 rhodium spectrum also this molecule. I shall tell you in case of 19 f fluorine NMR what happens is first it splits into a doublet due to PF coupling and then each line will be split into another doublet, each one will be a doublet because of fluorine to rhodium coupling and then each line will be split into again doublet because of 3 bond PF coupling. So, I have already given you hint you can do in the case of rhodium 103 rhodium it is exactly very similar. First it will be coupled with uh, phosphorus 1 jet to give a doublet and then each line will be split by fluorine to give a triplet and then each line in the triplet will be further split into doublet because of PB. So, now you try to sketch the NMR spectrum of both 19 f as well as 103 rhodium. If you have any difficulties let me know so that I can provide you later. So, now let us look into this molecule here. This molecule we have three cases as I mentioned and when spectrum is not given if somebody asks you to sketch the 14 N spe NMR spectrum of this molecule here this is bis diphenyl phosphine amine this is called and then you have to look into all the three cases. One is NH coupling is larger than NP coupling, other one is NP coupling is larger than NH coupling and other one is NP coupling is equivalent to NH coupling because all of them are one bond apart. So, first let us look into PN coupling is larger than 1H coupling. Since we have two phosphorus atoms are there, what happens first it would be split into a triplet and each line will be split into a doublet something like this. So, we have doublet of triplets we have and next when we look into 1J P N is less than 1J NH coupling. In that case what happens first it splits into a doublet and then each line will be split into triplet because of two equivalent phosphorus atoms. This is how it looks like in this case. So, it is simply something like this, something like this. Here it would be something like this. And then in this case the last one where PN coupling is equivalent to NH coupling, then we are identifying three nuclei equally coupled to nitrogen. In that case what happens? It would be a quadrate. When we have a quadrate, it would be something like this. So, all the three cases we should draw. If we plot NMR, 14 NMR and it should correspond to one of these. So, this is how you should be able to sketch and compare and analyze and interpret the data. It is not really complicated, right? Now we have another interesting problem here. Consider all possible isomers that could be obtained for the 8 membered ring compound P4, N4, Cl6, F2 and indicate the ideal 31P and the 19F resonance spectrum expected for each. So, of course, the moment you look into this one, it is already stated that it is a 8 membered ring. We have alternate phosphorus and nitrogen with alternate P and double bonds are there. They are called cyclophosphosanes. This is cyclotetraphosphosane and then each phosphorus having two halogens that is the reason each P is pentavalent and tetra coordinated. So, we have each one has two uh, nitrogen bonds, one is double bond, one is single bond and it has a combination of R. It can have either chlorine 2 or it is chlorine and fluorine. So, now what we should do is we should try to sketch all possible isomers and then we should speculate or we should uh, try to sketch NMR's 31P NMR spectrum and also 19F NMR spectrum for each isomer. I have already written all possible isomers. Totally 5 isomeric structures are possible for this composition of uh, N4, P4, Cl6 and pH. Of course, here I have taken a different molecules here and in the, in the problems I showed you P4, N4, Cl6, F2. But whereas here I have taken a different example here. To make it little simple, I have considered 4 chlorine atoms and phenyl atoms. Maybe in my next lecture, I can sketch all possible isomers for Cl6 and F2 combination and then sketch NMR spectrum for each case. So, now let us look into this simple one. In simple one, we are looking into only coupling between non-equivalent phosphorus atoms. That is the reason I thought it is to begin with let us go for a simple one. Now, this is one isomer. You can see in isomer 1, we have two different type of phosphorus are there. Two of them on opposite sides are you know doubly substituted with phenyl whereas other two with chlorine. 
and is very symmetric molecule it is. We have two different type of uh, that means basically we have A2, X2 type system and then we have here again we have identical ones. If we just look into it, we can uh, have a axis of rotation. It looks identical from one portion here. So, these two and these two again it is a A2, X2 type system. And then if we go for the third molecule here, in the third molecule we have three different type of phosphorus atoms are there. One having two phenyl groups, two phosphorus having one each of chlorine and phenyl group and the other one having two chlorine groups. That means here we have some sort of AMX pin system and in this one it, it is a very symmetric. We can anticipate a single resonance for this molecule here, single. And then there is one more possibility and then here also we have four different type of phosphorus atoms here, one, two, three, four and we can also see here each one is having of course uh, one, two, three, four couplings are there, how they are going to look like we can look into it. So, first one I have shown here, uh, first one as I said A to X to spin system, we get uh, these two in blue color would couple with uh, two red colored phosphorus uh, to give a triplet and same thing is true for the other set. So, we get two triplets we are getting here. And of course, in case of 2 also it is identical, we can get 2 triplets A to X2 again. In case of 3, what we have is AMX spin system. So, basically what we have is this one is coupled with this one to triplet and each triplet is split into a doublet. So, we get this one and then these two, uh, the these two will be coupled with this one first to give a doublet and then this correspond with splits for another one doublet so that we get doublet of doublet for this one and then this is a triplet and this is a triplet here. So, you can see this is given here and then the four all phosphorus atoms are identical we are getting a signal here and in case of five as I said it is we have one, two, three, four signals are there all of them are separate we are getting well further coupling is not possible one, one, two, three, four coupling is not possible only they are coupled to two. As a result what happens each one will show a doublet of doublet here. So, all four of them will be showing different ones and with color code I have given this color corresponds to the color given for the phosphorus atoms in the space so that uh, understanding would be rather easy. So, this we are get four quadrants we are getting whereas in case of five because all four are identical and they are coupling with only the nearby ones. The fourth one is farther away so that they are not coupling. So, P shows coupling with only these two P and uh, red and pink and similarly this one will couple with uh, blue and green and this one will couple with uh, red and pink so it goes like that. So, we have four of them will be showing each one a doublet of doublet. So, now I have listed compounds I have given the molecular formula here with molecular formula is there and also I have given the corresponding chemical shifts I have given. If you recall the extensive list I gave you in my previous lecture, one of my previous lectures, if you compare from that one where exactly the chemical shift falls based on that one whether it is downfield shifted or upfield shifted you have to write the spectrum. For example, if you just look into the molecule given here one signal is there means only one phosphorus there obviously and then we have C3 H9 O3. So, that means basically you can assume this may be the O C H3 three times. So, this will be having composition like I have shown here. In the same way you identify the type of molecule here and then try to write the structure in the blank given here. If you have any difficulty try it is very interesting it covers most of the phosphorus compounds we come across and also the extensive the list I gave you in one of my lectures you can use that one and write the structure for all of them. Once you write the structure it is very easy to understand and of course, here only this one is missing further information is also giving how each you know signal would look like the multiplet would look like here we have 10 lines why it is 10 lines because 9 equivalent protons are coupled with phosphorus to give 10 lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 looks something like this and then next one is separate is given if the separate is given and PF is 80.6 hertz then you should be able to 
analyze and then write the spectrum here and also write the structure. So, make an attempt for all of these molecules it's very simple because uh, all the data is given it is almost like providing NMR 31p NMR spectrum here and you have to molecular formula is given you should be able to write appropriate structure for in each case. You can see here chemical should 159 and then you know, we have 144 and then 2.3 2 minus 27 plus 11. 22.7 minus 2.8 plus 9 minus 66.4 and 53 and minus 45 and minus 144. I have very interesting molecule here. You can see here this molecule has uh, a silicon and uh, 3 hydrogen atoms are there on silicon and then nitrogen 15 N enriched molecule this is and then H is there and phosphorus is there. That means it is a very interesting molecule. You can sketch NMR for almost all nuclei here. You have 19F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 different type of NMR active nuclei are there. Of course, silicon abundance is very less, 29 silicon, but nevertheless you can when you are looking to fluorine NMR, phosphorus NMR, 1H NMR and 15 NMR, you can ignore the coupling due to silicon. And of course, in case of silicon NMR, you can consider all other couplings. So, let us try to do one at a time here. First let us look into 31 p NMR here, 31 p NMR let us look into it. In 31 p NMR you can see two fluorines are there and you know the magnitude of uh, PF is 1 J PF coupling is much larger. So, what you can do is first you split into a triplet. Okay, this is your 1 J PF coupling. So, next it is coupled with uh, nitrogen here. is your 1J PN coupling. Next we have 2J PH coupling is there, each line will be so this is 2J PH coupling. So next we have 1, 2, 3, 3 bond coupling with the silicon bound hydrogen atoms. We have 3 equivalent hydrogen atoms are there. Each line will be split into a quadrant here. So, this many lines will be there if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 into 4, 48 lines will be there in it and then the intensity should be maintained. So, 1 is to 3 overall intensity should be 1 is to 3 and here it is 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, it is 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, when we sketch spectrum of looking into this coupling tree. Uh, we should ensure that the intensity whatever is there that is maintained here. So, now with this one you can interpret which spectrum, the spectrum which spectrum it is it is not mentioned, but by sketching say 31 p NMR, 19 f NMR, 1 H NMR and 15 NMR you should be able to tell which spectrum is for which NMR nuclei we are talking about. So, this one should be phosphorus NMR. So, this one if you just see it looks like this here, yes this is for 31 p. So, let me show you in that one in the next slide. So, here I have taken 31 p NMR, you can see here the whatever the coupling I showed you, here it is there, you can see first phosphorus is coupled you know split by 3 fluorine atoms into uh, triplet and then each line in the triplet is split into a doublet because of uh, 1 J P N coupling doublet and then each line is further split by 3 J, 2 J P H. Okay, coupling with nitrogen bound hydrogen here and each one is a doublet here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then each line here will be split by SI H3 hydrogens to a quadrant okay, something like this. Now, we have something like this here, we have 48 lines are there. Okay, so, this is how you can show and then the corresponding spectrum would look like this very interesting molecule right and also spectrum looks wonderful <laughs> is, is that right. <laughs> so, very nice one. 
it is as I said, once you understand, once you write clear structure, even if the molecular formula is given or structural formula is given, try to write the full structure showing all the bonds and then start analyzing all NMR active nuclei, how far they are from the, the one we are looking into. And then with little bit of information you are having about the magnitude of the couplings, of course, no matter what happens, 1J coupling is always larger than the 2J coupling, then the 3J coupling, then you see you start analyzing. And due to some reason, if you have two different nuclei which are, you know, about three are same number of bonds apart, then it is likely that they are coupling equally. So, there is another possibility. So, that also one should look into it that we saw in case of bis diphenyl phosphenoamine case where we saw two phosphorus and one hydrogen were coupled equally to nitrogen. One should uh, look into all those things and analyze. It becomes very easy for interpretation. So, uh, one that I looked into 31P NMR for this molecule. In my next lecture, I shall discuss about uh, other two spectra that is yet to be analyzed that I shall do it in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.